So welcome to the American Rewind, where we're going to look back at some of the moments in the, the American Athletic Conference and its history. And, well, I was there for the American Conference Championship game between Memphis and Cincinnati this past year. And I got to say, it was a heck of an atmosphere. It was a great win for Memphis on what was a really fun evening of football. And joining me now is Memphis kicker Riley Patterson, who had a fantastic game that day. Riley, first of all, welcome to the American Rewind. And I want you to take me back to what it was like for you and your teammates getting ready for the conference championship game, hosting it. Unlike the year before, you're on the road. Now you're hosting the conference championship game just mentally. What did that do for you and your teammates going into that game? Uh, it was a big boost knowing that we've got a lot of really, really great fans in Memphis, and they all came out and supported us um, pretty much the entire year. And you can look back and see that during the college game day that we had, the other game we had against Cincinnati, and then Ole Miss as well. They always came out and supported us, so we knew that during the biggest game of the year for us, conference championship, they would be there, and they played a huge role in that. They would always be supportive of it, and uh, it was great. So from a kicking standpoint, right, kickers are they're a little bit like golfers, just in terms of you got to hit the big kick, the big shot at the right time to be able to, you know, help your football team win. So that was a high scoring game. You were great in the American championship game. Can you kind of walk people through what it is like? in the mind of a kicker as the game is growing and building first, second, then into the third and the fourth quarter, the psychology has got to be a little different than it is for your other teammates. Kind of walk people through that. Oh, well, it's definitely different for sure. Um, the only other position I think that could be a little bit similar is quarterback, but um, obviously they've got a lot of chances to, if they make a mistake, make up for it and then make more plays. For us, it's, um, we only get a certain amount of chances. And then when we do have the chance, we have to capitalize. So it's different in that aspect, but really every play is its own. Every play is different. So no matter what kind of mistake you made the play before or how good you made a kick, kick before, every play is different. So you have to treat each one in itself. So uh, the big thing for me, especially this season, and I've been lucky enough to kick the past three years, um, it, it's been awesome. but. Uh, my mindset has kind of changed into where being completely present in the moment and not worrying about the consequences of either making or missing a kick. Same thing with a field goal, just being completely present in the moment and being able to focus on whatever I need to do, whatever my mindset, whether it be up or down or whatever it is to focus it right on that kick in that moment so I can just do my job and let whatever the consequences be what they are. For you, what was the the moment that will give you some memory burn about winning the American Conference Championship? Uh, I remember running the confetti afterwards. I thought that was crazy, but the I, I think it was after the very last kickoff that I had. Um, so we went down and scored. I thought we were going to have to make pretty much a game winning field, but we ended up scoring. Thank goodness for that touchdown. And then uh, I hit the extra point, then I hit the kickoff, and then at that point, there wasn't much time left in the game. And Cincinnati was on their final drive, and I was just thinking, all right, my job is over. We're up. I think we were up by more than a field goal or at least three points. And I'm like, my job is over. I went to the corner, and I was just praying, and I was on my, oh, my gosh. I Since I've been here, winning the conference championship has eluded us, and uh, that's really just been the focus for me and for our team ever since we've been here. And I knew how close it was, and they were driving down the field, and I was getting nervous, but... I mean, our defense did a great job, took a last minute stand, and uh, we can't wait up to win. And just running and celebrating with the guys and the rest of that night, it was, it was amazing. Well, I know being down on the field, there were a lot of fans down there who were just really in the moment. And then you go on to a bowl game, and now you come in with even more expectations. How did winning the American Conference Championship last year carry over into what is an unprecedented offseason for you and your teammates to try to get ready and defend that title? Uh, well, obviously, this is a different offseason for all of us. And then with COVID, after winning a championship, and then all this stuff going on. So it's a little different. New head coach, even though he's been here before. But uh, honestly, it's, it's pretty much the same process, though just trying to get better every day, 
trying to trust our coaches the best that we can and letting the results be what they are when it comes uh, to the season and just trust in whatever process that we really have in place. And we all really, really love Coach Serverfield, and we're all fully behind him, and we trust him, and we're just really excited about what we can do this season. I see no reason why we can't do it all again. Do you feel like with the transition from one coach to another that you kind of can just pick up right where you have left off? Is there a real level of comfort, or are, or are there some things that are different that comes with having a new head coach? Well, personally, for me, lucky my job doesn't change too much. But, um, I mean, pretty much I'm, I'm hoping that the offense is going to be staying the same. But since he was here before, I don't think there is a giant transition. Um, you know, we all have really been great friends with him. He's always been a player's coach. So we're all very comfortable with him. And, yeah, there really has been much of a transition. Not too much has changed uh, besides the obvious and the kind of the season that we're in. But yeah, it, it's been great. We're all just really excited about it. We we are always like leaning forward for this season. So yeah, we're ready to go. All right, so let me ask you, we addressed COVID a little bit in terms of the preparation. We're in a, a, a time in our country that I don't even know how to put into words, quite honestly. We've got social injustice is on a lot of people's minds. We know there's there are riots, there are protests. We've got a lot going on in our country right now, and I'm curious from you, Riley, you, your teammates, interactions, some of the discussions that you've been having. Obviously, it's going to be a big part of football this year. I'm just curious from your end, have you talked to teammates? Have you been texting with some of your your teammates? What are some of those discussions like around what is going on in our country? Well, there's been a lot of communication between our teammates. We just had last Sunday night a, a pretty long talk with uh, our head coach, Silverfield, kind of leading it off. And then a lot of guys just started pouring out their hearts and just letting us know how it affects them. Um, white and back players just trying to figure out, you know, how we're supposed to unite together through this and what's it going to look like for, for us. Because we know that in our little culture here, with uh, our, our football team that we all love each other very much and it is the brotherhood. But we also have a position in the community and a job within the community to represent how good our culture is so that we can influence the rest of Memphis. So um, the rest of the guys on this team, they're, I'm, I'm just so grateful for them. And they really they did just pour out their hearts and let us know how this was affecting them and how uh, empathetic that I am for a lot of these situations and just trying to understand and trying to communicate how real this is to each other. So it's a lot of listening and it's a lot of hearing uh, different sides. And I think we're growing bigger and stronger through this every day. So I'm really thankful that Coach Silverfield is able to help us do that and give us a platform to talk about this with the whole team. And I think we'll be doing some more things with it moving forward. Well, Riley, thanks for the time, man. This has been a uh, good walk down memory lane. It's good to hear that you and your teammates are communicating right now during this important time. And thanks for joining us on the American Rewind. And normally this is where I would say, hey, man, I'll see you in Newport, but maybe I'll virtually see you on media day once we get everything set up here at the American Athletic Conference. Because, again, it's going to be a different year for everyone. If I don't see a good luck this season, hopefully we catch up down the road. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys for having me on.